first asked by ICRC, a great partner of ours, if we wanted to have a show to focus on Princeton. Obviously, that answer was yes. So here's our very first one, and we're excited to offer to you today four great representatives of Princeton High School, four seniors that are getting ready to introduce themselves. But before they do that, we are going to recognize the past, the present, and we're going to talk about the future in this program. And again, what better way to start than with four tremendous seniors? So let's meet them. Huh? Hello, everyone. My name is Ayana Jordan, and I am a section leader in a cappella choir at Princeton. I am the president of the marching band. I am in National Honor Society. I am in Tri-M, and I am also part of the Senior Student Council. That's it? Yes, sir. Do you have any time to study? Hey, we got to make do. <laughs> All right, very good. Thank you, and welcome. Hi, my name is Andrew McDaniel. I am in Acapella Choir, and I'm a section leader for the bass section. I'm also involved in Princeton's orchestra, symphonic orchestra, and the chamber orchestra. I'm in National Honor Society in Triam, and I play varsity water polo for the school. Very good. Now, earlier, Andrew, I'd asked specific questions like, did everybody have all their activities all written down? And I know you had everything from last year. Have you had some opportunities already this year that you could write down? For sure. For sure all right. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Thank you. Hi, my name is Addie. Um, I'm in currently I'm a section leader in the band. I'm in Triam. I'm also in the National Honor Hispanic Society. Um, National Honor Society as well. Uh, what else do I do? Now, I, now, I heard, Addie, you were in some videos. Yes. Maybe even twice. Mm -hmm. Yes. That was actually, you were in the uh, This is Princeton yes. video? Yes, I was in it twice with two different looks. Which okay, <laughs> all right, very good. Funny. Two different characters. Tremendous. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm Vincent Lee Munlin Jr. I am a senior at Princeton High School, and I am part of the National Honor Society. I am the captain of the football team. I wrestle, and I run track. All right, now, now Vincent, I remember uh, you did a speech one time last year, I think yes, it was, I right did. for the yes. Rotary Four-Way Speech Competition. You yes, finished sir. third among all those uh, competitors. Is yes, that sir. accurate? Yes, sir. And you talked specifically about being a student. Student athlete. A student athlete, before athlete. Student first. Excellent. Yes. Okay. It was called Going Beyond the Locker Room. Excellent. Okay, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Yes, sir. Hey, so welcome. And I know you guys are so poised, and you've done a great job already with just the introductions. So last Friday, you had a unique opportunity. And, in fact, why don't we do this? Let's talk about the state superintendent, but not from our words. Let's see what he thought about Princeton City Schools in an interview that I did with him in our Ad Viking Diff program. So let's take a look at that. Welcome to another incredible episode of At Viking Diff. Today, it's my honor to introduce Vike Nation to the State Superintendent, Paolo Di Maria. Paolo, you spent the day at Princeton. What were some of your thoughts? Well, first of all, I had a fantastic day from top to bottom. Um, you have amazing students, and I loved everyone that I came across because they were engaged and excited, represent a whole diversity of different circumstances, and yet make a co collective of a family. They all talked about being part of a family and really belonging. I saw amazing teachers, uh, one after the other, uh, you know, differentiating their instruction, really making their lessons engaging, a lot of learning going on, and I saw some fantastic principals and other administrators that you can, you can tell you've created a cohesiveness among the culture of your staff that's really caring about kids and caring about their accomplishments. You know, one of the things that I uh, made mention when we were driving around the district is the fact that sometimes make, people make a mistake by looking at the outside of the school and just thinking that's the beauty. The beauty is not outside the school. The beauty is inside Absolutely. the school. And that came so out loud and clear. So you some thoughts Oh, on yeah, that? yeah. I mean, it came out loud and clear. The, you know, kids talk about their favorite teachers and what subjects are exciting them and all the different opportunities. We started our day meeting with business, the community, and I really have to tip my hat to you guys for building that strong business uh, school partnership and giving your kids the opportunity to get out there and have work-based learning experiences because that really tells me that you're focusing on meeting the needs of each and every child and their own particular aspirations and desires and future pursuits uh, and and what better way to do that by giving them than giving them real world experience yeah so paul i'm not going to put you on the spot although i really want to uh, but our mission statement is empowering each student for college career and life success yeah 
So walk, walking around, did you, did you kind of feel that students felt absolutely. empowered? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, one of the specific questions I always ask students is, do you feel like your voice is heard? And I think I got the sense that the answer was yes, uh, that they could go to adults and administrators with their ideas and concepts. Some made some really good suggestions that I know you're already acting a absolutely. on in terms of college applications and so forth. So, so you could tell there was this dynamic between students and staff that, really, again, formed that foundation of really being a family and having a sense of mutual care and mutual belonging. Well, listen, certainly appreciate you and your great team. It was a pleasure. I've down. been inspired. I've been excited. I'm always energized when I visit schools and see great things happening. Well, thank you again. Keep up the great work you're doing. Yep. Signing off for Ad Vike and Diffin. As always, go Vikes. Go Vikes. All right, so hey, we just heard from Paulo Di Maria, the state superintendent. Can you talk a little bit about your lunch? And you guys can just kind of free flow a little bit. Awesome. Uh, the lunch was phenomenal. It was just a great opportunity for our students to speak about how they felt empowered by our Viking community, which was great between different departments that we have at the school, between music, administration, uh, the social studies department. So it was phenomenal. And just being able to freely express and have the acceptance about what we had to say and see the change starting right from the ending of that meeting was just phenomenal. So I loved it. Very good. Yeah, the, the lunch with the superintendent was really great. There was a, it, was really, it was a really open talk with everybody, and I feel like everybody got to express change that can be needed or maybe in the future that can. And everybody was just really open. It was a really open environment. So not only was it really beneficial to Princeton and the future of Princeton, but everybody was open. And I think it's just brought us all closer together, which is a cool thing that I didn't really expect from that, and it's really nice. Were you, were you a little shocked that the state superintendent came to Princeton? Yeah, I, I noticed that. I was kind of wish that I could have spoke earlier because after going after everybody, I was kind of like, wow, like what I'm bringing to the table is it even matched with some of the other people because everybody's just great that was picked to go there. Excellent. Well, thank you. Addie? Um, I loved having to be able to speak to the superintendent because not everybody gets to do that and to be able to tell them struggles that we have with the whole school with getting prepared and going to college was really nice because he was able to take that information and hopefully he'll do something with it, you know. So Addie, let me continue to put you on the spot. Um, so we talked a lot about with the state superintendent, like a, a bunch of positives. We talked yes. about how he felt empowered and whatever. And then we, <clears throat> we talked about how he felt empowered and then we specifically kind of talked about and confronted some brutal facts, yes. right? Um, it was pretty emotional for a lot of people, yeah. right? And, and, and at one point you told a story. Uh, do, do you mind sharing that with us again uh, about your way to school? Yeah, Thursday was, before school, um, I was driving over to school and it was a rainy day. So I was driving over and my car slipped. So I was like, obviously to me that was a little traumatizing because it was like the first time. So I was able to come. My mom told me that it was necessary for me in order to go to school because, you know, education, everything else. I was fine, the car was fine, you know, everything was fine. So she made me come to school and obviously I was a little upset, you know, the car accident, a little, like I said, a little traumatizing. And I was able to come to school and talk to like one of my teachers and she was just like very supportive and I was able to just talk it out and have the support from my teachers, which is pretty awesome. So uh, Vincent, there was uh, a lot of family conversation mm -hmm. that, that we had talked about and that actually you all three talked specifically about about that we feel like sometimes we, go, we come to school, but really like people corrected themselves and say, no, it's not like we're going to school. Mm -hmm. It's like we're going home. Yeah. So can you kind of talk a little bit about the, the family atmosphere as well as what you felt with the state superintendent yeah, luncheon? Can, yeah, so I would say that, well, I'm going to start with the superintendent lunch. Um, that experience, that was a, a great experience. I like the fact that it was like a little small group that we were be able to pick picked out amongst the whole school over 400 or 4,000 uh, students and be able to talk to him and tell, uh, tell him our stories and our experience at the school and, um, yeah, and tell him the different types of things that we want that want changed. And so the family atmosphere at our school is phenomenal. Like you can come to school, like I can say that I play three sports. It's going to be kind of hard to get your work done because a lot of students are having trouble getting their work done playing multiple sports and I'm happy enough and I'm very grateful that I have teachers that are willing to help me like I'll say Miss Stoller. Miss Stoller helps me really helps me 
Uh, my mom calls her and all that, talk about, hey, Vincent needs help with this, Vincent needs help with that. So yeah, the family atmosphere is very incredible at Princeton. So of the close to 2,000 students at Princeton, mm -hmm. so that was something that you all kind of feel that you felt special enough to be chosen yes, sir. for the luncheon. All right, let's talk about a couple other things. Um, Vikings is a specific program to help to kind of give back uh, at different functions. So you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes. As a Viking, it's a phenomenal way to represent Princeton, but also connect community. So because we are really big on family, we allow to host these events, but to see faces from all denominations, which is fantastic. You have people like me, Addie, who are different between race, social class. We get to come together and just show people like, hey, Princeton represents all this is what the family aspect feels like. So it's phenomenal to be a Viking. Yeah, being a Viking here at Princeton is great. There's no other school I'd rather be at. I, I, something I get proud of talking to different schools is like, I get to say that I have known several different people, different ethnicities, different cultures, and I've learned of that. And I feel like that makes me more open-minded towards everybody. And I know a lot of schools don't get that. They don't have all that diversity, but I think that's important here. And with the classes that you can take, you get, you can meet so many different people and it just, you learn a lot and it makes you bigger as a person. You know, so, so last night we had the state of the schools and I think I do know quite well the person who did a beautiful job mm -hmm. singing the national anthem. I wonder who that was. Just grab the mic already. You're not going to sing now, although I think everybody would love to hear her sing. But you will see a video soon that does focus. Yes. So let, let me just say this, that at State of Schools last night, we talked specifically about multiple pathways. And when you talked about multiple pathways, it wasn't just about going to college or enlisting in the military or, or going directly in the world of work. We talked about the academic program. And so, Andrew, when you talk specifically about the, the different classes and all that, do you want to talk about maybe just a couple of the classes that you're in right now? Sure, and then sure. Addie and then Vincent, and then yeah. we'll come back. Um, I take a lot of different classes. I have three music classes, and that's a lot to handle. But also, I take CCP, IB, and AP, which sounds like a bunch of crazy terms and a lot of classes that make you stress. But really, here at Princeton, I don't stress about that at all. Sure, workloads. but. The teachers there are great. They really hammer in what it means to be in those kind of classes and get that kind of college credit. And they're really cool experiences because not a lot of schools have, I know AP is pretty popular, but we have IB and we offer CCP, which is really incredible. And I'm really grateful that I can take these classes and it's helped me with college. Sure. So for the people that are out there that are wondering about all these acronyms, CCP is College Credit Plus. And all the high schools in the state of Ohio do offer that. Now. When you talk about International Baccalaureate, or IB, that is something that's very unique to Princeton. Only one of nine schools in the entire state of Ohio actually offer a full IB program. And then we also have advanced placement courses ranging from, well, all over the gamut. And so we're really excited to be able to offer those pathways. Addie, why don't you talk about your classes? Um, sure. I currently take IB classes and AP classes, one honors class. Um, what I love about the classes is that they do really get your, like, the teachers have a way, great way of teaching it to grab your attention and actually, you know, focus on everything you're doing. And, like, they do put, like uh, Andrew said, they do give you some work, which can sometimes be stressful. But, like, they work around your schedule as well because they do understand that not only do we have social lives, we have activities within the school, like, we have sports, right, like athletes. So they do work around our schedules, which I love because we are very busy as yeah. seniors as well, so. So one of the things that, uh, you know, speaking of the different activities, our music department, once again, in the entire district was recognized yes. as best music communities of education. And so year over year over year, there's all these opportunities. Now, Vincent, I'm sure you have a great voice. <laughs> so if you don't mind, Vincent, if you could sing your favorite, no, I'm just kidding. All about this. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're getting ready to go. So Vincent, uh, talk a little bit about the kind of exploratory opportunities that we have and, and some of the classes you're taking currently. Um, the classes I'm taking currently, I'm taking weightlifting. I'm a sports guy, so I have to stay in the gym. Um, I take drawing and painting because I'm an artistic type of guy. I love to draw. I take one honors class and it's going to turn to CCP uh, second semester and that's um, honors engineering STEM class. And so I'm gonna be, be able to get a college credit from UC. So yeah, that's gonna be a really good experience this year. Right, so um, 
I, I know you guys weren't in the state of schools, but one of the things I talked about was at Princeton, of all the students that took College Credit Plus, of all the students that took College Credit Plus, 770 hours of college credits were earned by Princeton students. Wow. So we've seen so many, so many wonderful opportunities and we're really excited to be able to have great partners with, like, for instance, Hocking College, Cincinnati State, mm -hmm. Sinclair, University of Cincinnati, Miami. And so we're, again, being able to provide those multiple pathways is really, really important to us. All right, so to continue with the, the academic rigor that we have at Princeton. So as of right now, I take uh, some AP classes and one uh, specific course that I take is AP Psychology, which I'm so thankful for Princeton because it has allowed me to see uh, the avenues of psychology which I want to go to as I graduate Princeton. So just having a phenomenal teacher like Mrs. Slate just show you what it feels like to have the course load, just show you what it feels like different avenues and different concentrations that you can have. So I'm so thankful for the uh, Princeton uh, education system and the fact that we have different varieties to choose from. So as we close out this segment of today's program, I'd like everybody to have one more opportunity to give a thought, perhaps what it's like to be a Viking one more time, or just a closing thought. So to be a Viking means that you are empowered at all costs, and it just shows you that you have support from all your teachers to uh, choose any avenue of life between going to college or going into the work field, going to the military. There's so much support, and there's so many resources from you to choose freely. So to be a Viking just means to be empowered and to be supported. For me, being a Viking means you're not going to just settle for anything. You're going to strive to be as great as you can, and everybody here is going to empower you to do so. To be a Viking means that any, everyone will have your back. They'll always be there to encourage you to try new things, take harder classes like IB classes, and just be there and support you in whatever you choose to do. Now, Eddie, before you go, I'm going to put you on the spot. Sure. May I do that? <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you. So, Addy, you told a story earlier about when your car had kind of slid off the yes. road and how upset you were. And I remember when you talked with the state superintendent, you were sharing that story and you said that when that happened, you were flustered and you went home yes. and then you corrected yourself. And then you said, no, I went to Princeton, to the high school, and then you corrected yourself. I said I came home. You came home. Yes. So being a Viking also is... is Just is, coming home to your family who's going to be there and support you on whatever you do. Thank you. Um, so everybody pretty much said everything about being a Viking. But being a Viking to me, well, I've had family that came through Princeton. Uh, my dad, my aunts, my uncles, everybody came through Princeton. So Princeton is really home to me. Um, so when I graduate from Princeton, i never forget about Princeton. I'm always going to be a Viking. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, this is, this is amazing. And to kind of bring us um, out of this segment and into another one, we had a tremendous opening of school. We have an opening convocation. And during the opening convocation, we bring all the staff members, and they come into Matthew's Auditorium, and we always try to have a little surprise for them. So let's take a look at what happened, and you may recognize a face, perhaps our first soloist, who happens to be directly next to me. So let's take a look at that video opening directed by Mr. David Dindler, a cappella teacher, and also, most importantly, our amazing a cappella group. We stand together, and I know that you will stand by me, and most importantly, stand by our students. Pay attention to the back, if you will, please. When the night has come and the land is dark, and the moon is the only I will see. No, I won't be afraid. No, I won't be afraid. Just as long as you stand, stand by me.
Welcome back to Viking Voices, the people of Princeton. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to recognize and celebrate the past. We're going to talk about the here and now. And we're also going to talk about the future through empowerment. Well, with us right now, 1982 graduate of Princeton High School, is Kelly Reason, although Kelly Lobb in high school. So, Kelly, why don't you talk just a little bit about Princeton, what it means to you, and then we're going to get down to this unbelievable project you had, raising over $500,000 for a great mural project. But talk a little bit about what Princeton meant to you, or means to you. Princeton to me is in my blood. I bleed Viking. My dad worked it for 37 years. As I say, it not only educated me, but it fed me as well. Lived across the street from Dr. Lucas, the first well, the superintendent at Princeton. Um, it taught me, and you could always tell Princeton kids around the city, because they could go in and out of any socioeconomic group, any racial group. You grew up with kids in your school that were, you know, struggling, and we loved the people who were struggling, and academically, you know, had special needs, you had kids who were in the top classes. You loved each other as it was brothers. Entire gamut. Exactly. It was a cross collateralization of the world. And you could go in and out of any of those groups because those were your brothers and sisters that you went to school with every day. So you never lose that Viking pride that you have because it taught us and equipped us so well for life. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, during the State of the Schools address, I talked a little bit about uh, a video that I had done with the state superintendent. In fact, we saw that earlier. And we talk about the beauty of the high school, the beauty of the, all the schools themselves. But that's really truly not the beauty. The beauty is what happens inside, mm -hmm. right? The, the teachers, the staff, and all that. Just it's simply amazing. But there is a beautiful piece of the history of Princeton. That you had an integral piece. And you know, actually, you led the entire project. So can you talk about what you've done with the beautiful murals and preservation? Well, there's a mural that was built by Carl Zimmerman. It was commissioned by Dr. Robert E. Lucas back in 1958. It's made of the famous Cambridge tile. There was Rookwood, Wheatley, and Cambridge. It's Cambridge tile. And Carl Zimmerman was a famous Cincinnati artist. His only work left is down at St. Peter and, and Chains. And it's based on Shakespeare and the Seven Ages of Man, saying that, you know, it doesn't matter what phase you go through in life from being a boy to learning words, to ask a woman to marry you, to start a home, into being a soldier, and then at old age, it says you rest in the wisdom of knowing that what you've learned will never die with you, because if you prize one of the greatest gifts that God's ever given you, which is your mind and your education that Princeton gives to you, it will take you faithfully through every phase of your life. So it was so important for me, because not only is it Princeton history, it's Cincinnati history, that we preserve that, and especially for our alumni and for the kids that are there today, that that is a touchstone and a mantra to say, you know what, if I get down to business while I'm here these four years at Princeton, that I, it will take me, this gift they've given me, through every phase of my life if I just take advantage of what's in front of me. So to me, the mural says that to the kids that are there now, and to the alumni, it says home. Well, there's so much to talk about the mural project in general, right? We have a beautiful kiosk that was designed, which talks about the, the school. It talks about the seven phases and recognizes all these people that made major contributions. So a question that I was asked recently is, boy, the murals look phenomenal. How much did it cost the district? And I love answering that question because of your great work. So how, taxpayers dollars, Kelly, to date, how much has that been used on the murals? The goose egg. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. So, Kelly, how did you Absolutely. do that? How did you raise the money? And do you want to talk a little bit about some of those people that really were integral? Well, you know what? I think you really have to have a passion for something and a wild hair, which I had <laughs> both. And also never take the word no for an answer. Know that there's a way when somebody says something can't be done, you just have to think outside of the box. And I knew it was so important to the Princeton history, to Cincinnati history, that we had to save it. So no was not an option. Taking that and being fueled by that, um, I just started getting the word out. I was on the news. I was on the radio. We put it all over the Internet. And through that, we met different businesses. I went to businesses. I knocked on doors. Um, I talked to a lot of different alumni, and they ended up giving us lots of different money. We had 
one alumni give fifty thousand. We had another one give over a hundred thousand dollars. And then businesses all around town, and some even outside of town, said, "We don't see this happen very often anymore. We want to be part of this. We tell us what we can do." So not only did people give monetarily speaking, but they gave in-kind donations where metal panel systems did the roofing. You know, you had Ari Middleton that did concrete. I mean, I could not begin to list over the five years the people in the communities that have come together who saw the value, who saw the purpose and the vision and have brought it to completion. You know, uh, our mission statement at Princeton, as you've probably heard me say a million times, is empowering each student for college, career and life success. Mm -hmm. So having this tax-free, this beautiful structure, which our students are gonna be able to perform on the stage. We're gonna have programming there to really continue that mission. It's amazing, it's amazing. Now, I know you said there are multiple people that helped along the way, but obviously it takes a leader. Just know that we recognize through your selfless giving, we would not have had what we have today. I also know that on even the most inclement days, you even had people flying in from Colorado to help do work. We did. Mike Lindner, he's grad of 1968. He, Gary Thompson from the class of 68, Steve Robinson from 68. You had all these guys who were very willing to give up their time and their own resources to come here and actually get in the trenches to dig them, to pump them out when we had all the water and all the rain. They saw the vision and they knew the importance and they gave of their blood, sweat and tears and time to make it happen. Well, that's great. Kelly, thanks so much for coming here. Thank you for empowering our students, empowering our community, and recognizing and appreciating the value of that great structure. Thank you, and the, thank you for your murals. leadership and your help in it as well. I appreciate it. Well, and you know what, Kelly, as we close, we had three amazing students, actually, that we didn't even introduce because they were behind the cameras or in the production facility. So we're really appreciative of those three for giving up their time yeah. and taking part in this and filming us right now. <laughs> exactly. So thanks again, Kelly. Thank you. I appreciate it. On August 28th, we had over 200 business partners that converged Princeton High School. And it was incredible. Those 200 business partners had an opportunity to meet with 50 of our students. During that time, they learned about our wonderful work ethic program. They learned about our six areas of focus. It's really important for us when students graduate from Princeton that they have the skills, the professional skills, and also the hard skills to make sure that they're gonna be successful in their career and in life. For more information on the Business Partnership Program, you can go to our website, www.princetoncityschools.net. Together, we can make Cincinnati, greater Cincinnati, and in fact, the tri-state region, as strong as it could be through innovation, collaboration, and healthy disruption. Signing off for Viking Voices, the people of Princeton, I'm Tom Burton. Thank you so much for viewing, and as always, Go Vikes!